Second round where he won 5-2. And this bottom half of the bracket at 55 was absolutely stunning. So you've probably seen him in the European action. What do you know about uh, Sir Tamiya? He is like this kind of a wrestler who is explosive very fast. He's dangerous in every position he is in. And it's like it can be 8-0, but it can also, he can also lose 8-0. Right. Because sometimes he takes some risks, but often he lands on top. How great is it when we have wrestlers who take risks? I watch you. I know you weren't afraid to take a risk in a match, and especially in Greco where we see some of our bouts going 1-1 one, one, and people are kind of unsure of what's going on. But when you have two athletes who just get after it, what, how important is that to the sport? It's very important for the view from the outsiders um, because nobody wants to see someone who is just standing. They want action. And those guys, they will bring it to us. And I think this match is going to have that. Referee uh, looks at Beck Balotov and says, get your head up, moving up. And now we have the outside of his arm. They are working very a lot with the, with the wrist to get the control. I think both of them want to get on top first. Absolutely. So looking at this, and what you don't see is what happens in between the chest to chest with that hand fight. Uh, you know, it might not it might look like dancing, but it's fighting in there with the hands. It's a chess game with the hands. But suddenly you can make an arm drag. You can get to the attack you want. So the technique of getting the hands is very important, especially when you're small and fast. Right. And again, we looked at their differing styles, uh, both very quick wrestlers, but Big Balatov's a little bit taller as Sir Tamiya gets his first chance on top. And this could be ugly for Bekbalatov if he can't get his hands, you know, and get his body moved in the correct position to defend that gut wrench. Yeah, Bekbalatov, he's very flexible, have good defending, but both of them are used to this kind of defending, but it would be hard to tell because very good defending and very good attack at this point. So you heard the referee say open red, his elbow came back and he blocked. In, in that situation, do you open up right away when the official, or do you make him really stop you? Um, I'm not paying too much attention. Oh, uh, two points, two points. He fake lifted and then he rolled to the other side. No point for the second rolling. And, and a great defense on that second uh, for Beck Balatov as he twisted his body around and was able uh, to stop the second gut wrench from happening. He is very long, very difficult to, to get that lift. But yeah. like you said, he faked one way, came the other way on the lift. Uh, so a 3-0 to zero lead for Sir Tsumiya as we go back up on our feet. And sometimes it's very hard in the pater to get the long guys because they're awkward. They always have the feet on the, on the mat. So it's a hard for, for a small guy to lift him up. So, so in that situation, you're a taller, longer guy. Did you work up the chest a little bit instead of working the waist because they have such that flexibility to bend? Yeah, it, it's, it depends on the tactics, how, how you can get the guy. But, I, I mean, I always lift it. That was my first priority to everything. Maybe I fake lift it and rolling on the other side, but it was what I was good at. So. And, and, and when you get to the world semifinals, you stick with what got you there. You don't try to change your tactics. If it works, you go with it. Exactly. In wrestling, it's like some people have many attacks and many uh, opportunities, but you have to have one or two attacks that you do perfectly. And that's drilled and drilled and drilled every day. So it just becomes second nature. Exactly. So a caution in one, and so that's a that's a very big caution there for against Sir Tsumiya, because if you have the same amount of scores and the same points, uh, that's the first criteria now. If everything yeah. else is equal before the last point scored, that's the that's the small details in a, in a close match at this level. Then it's maybe a little bit stupid to make it because it's always close, and then maybe it will be three three. 4-4, four, four, right. and then you have the odds against you. Do, you. do you like that change in the rule that they did with the, with the caution be coming before the last point scored? Because I know that was a change a couple of years ago. Yeah, but... Yeah, I think it's a good thing. I think it's a good thing. But it also... It makes a lot of fight different. Right. Like the last uh, point uh, scored... Then somebody, like we talked to, uh, we talked about before, 
then they make the tactic go down first and then the second one so everybody's taking the rules and making tactic out of it right. so someone if it's someone's not well you think about it even when we were going to the ball grab uh, when we were grabbing a ball out of a bag to see who would get the first choice and there was three periods so you're always going to change tactics depending on what the rule set is yeah, exactly. as we go back to the second period three to one search Samia wrestler from Georgia And now you can see he's putting on a tempo like he don't want to get down, but almost every time he will he will get the passivity. The the, the second time yeah. you're gonna give it to give a, a second chance to the to the other wrestler. Exactly. I was talking to an official and he said it's not a lack of action, it's a lack of scoring. So they can change that and because sometimes you can't tell if they're standing in the middle of the mat, you have to have that passive. If, if it's zero to zero. Exactly. My, um, my fight in the World Championship one time, I made uh, points in standing. So in the second round, I should really be very passive to get down. Right. So I think that's a good thing because then people take risk and do some throws. Right. And they put themselves in bad position so you can score and be back on top. Yeah, exactly. Again, working the hands and the wrists. Search me a, up three to one at this point. And you can see the coach is standing up. Yeah, he wants him to work harder. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was almost out, but got the turnaround. Right, yeah. but in that situation, Sertzmir really forced his way to the edge. Because he wanted the point. He wanted the point for the step down. out, right? Yeah. But he pushed a little too hard and got a little throw by there on that underhook. Yeah. And so Beck Balatov, right now, because last point scored and because of the caution, he has criteria. Yeah. And like you said, and at 3-3, three to three, you're not going to see a lot of officials unless there's blatant passivity. They're not going to put him back down. They're going to oh. make him work from here. But, yeah, those 55 guys, everything can happen. Right. They are so fast, so explosive. You cannot tell when the, the fight is over. So Sir Samia does exactly the same thing. Went to the well again. This time pushes Beck Molotov to the edge, and he gets the point for the step out. But now they're cautioning Sir Samia again, it looks like. Oh, maybe for a head bomb. Uh... And so a caution in one, uh, what they call brutality or headbutt? Yeah, maybe, maybe. And that's huge with the two cautions if that stays. Yeah. But if he got a caution, then oh, no, we're gonna, they're going to move it back. Ah, I believe. Okay. I think they. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't see them call for a caution there, no, so I was no. surprised to see it. So, that Balatov with the caution and one point for Tsurkmia, but he decides to stay up on the feet after the caution and one. So they're back on their feet, yeah. and a five to three lead for Tsurkmia here with one minute thirty seconds to go in our second period here. World semifinals, 55 kilograms. This is the second semifinal. Looking to see who is going to meet Azizli of Azerbaijan in the final. So again, holding center, both athletes working for that position. I think Bek Balatov looking to dig into that underhook and where he scored on the edge earlier. Yeah, always like one on the, uh, one minute left, then it's just a wall. Just pure wall who can maybe get uh, two points at the last. And who can create a little chaos out there, right? To see it's who uh, can make a mistake. Yeah. me has been here before, so you would think that he would have the ability to hold position and not be overwhelmed in the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Luxury Sertsamia, again, world bronze medalist last year, world gold medalist in 2019, uh, as we were in Nur Sultan, Kazakhstan. He's also been a U23 gold medalist. He's been at every level where he's medaled at the Cadet Worlds, the Junior Worlds, the U23 Worlds, and the World Championship. So he's made his way across all of our divisions with UWW. Nice little Ooh. slide by by Beck Dalatov. Yeah. I was like getting uh, a little bit desperate, so he tries a lot of things right now, the last 10 seconds. 
I saw some matches earlier that were three to one, and the wrestler that was down by two did not make any effort to score. I like the fact that at least at the end, he's still going. He's still trying trying. To, yeah, trying yeah, to get yeah, to that yeah. world final. Still very explosive after, after. the fight. After the fight, yeah. after the match, Serge Samia with that backflip and a five to three decision. He goes back to the world finals. So Azerbaijan and Georgia at 55 kilometers. He's looking at the coach from Kazakhstan, saying, uh, his coach from Georgia, saying, come on up here. Yeah, let me throw you. Yeah, let me see, <laughs> but it's not the World Finals. Maybe exactly. if he gets to the World Finals exactly. and gets yeah. the gold. It's a good tradition for the Finals. Especially if it's a little 